When working with tables in Excel, it's usually advantageous to upgrade those tables to what we call proper Excel data tables. This gives us access to the whole table design ribbon and all the great things it has to offer. One of the great things that data tables offer is when you're writing formulas, you can utilize what are known as structured references. A structured reference is where you refer to a column idea as opposed to a specific cell location. So in this case, instead of saying, take the value of C7, I can say, take the value of the current row's amount. And this allows me to write the same formula through the whole column, because every row is calculating on a context basis. So whatever row I'm on, I get that row's amount field. Same thing for the discount, take the current row's amount times 10%, and then I could write something like a total that says, take the current row's amount minus the current row's discount plus the current row's tax. And this looks a lot better than something like C7 minus E7 plus D7. One of the weaknesses of structured references is that they don't play well with formulas outside of the table. For example, if I were to write a formula that says equals, instead of saying C7, like a traditional cell reference, I could click on cell C7 and get the structured reference. Go to the sales table and give me the current row's amount. So the at sign means current row. And then I could take that and multiply that by the percentage rate in cell H6. Now, if I plan to fill this down, I need to lock that H6 reference in place. So I'm gonna press F4, drop those dollar signs, and then press enter. And now I'd have to take this formula and manually fill it down the length of the table. Now, because of the way I designed this, there's a separate calculation for every single sales rep for the entire height of this table. Let's do this more efficiently. I'm gonna hit undo. I'm gonna go back into the formula and remove the reference for the current row. So now I'm taking the entire amount column and multiplying it by H6. And because of the new dynamic array engine, we get a spilled array of answers. And because I'm using a spilled array, I actually don't even need these dollar signs anymore, so I can hit F4 and take those out. And that does make the formula a little bit cleaner. So we can see our formula, take the sales amount column and multiply every entry in that column by cell H6. Here is the problem. I want to take that formula and repeat it to the right four more columns and we can see that it does repeat, and it changes every commission rate percentage relative to the direction and distance I repeated. So H6 goes to I6, to J6, to K6, to L6. The problem is that the reference to the amount column also behaves in a relative fashion, and we end up going from the amount column, to the tax column, to the discount column, to the total column. And since total was the last column in the table, the next instance of this formula actually loops back around to the sales rep column. And of course, we can't multiply numbers by words, so we get errors. What we need is that amount reference to behave in more of an absolute fashion, like when we drop dollar signs into a traditional cell reference. So I'm going to hit undo. The key to turning a relative structured reference into an absolute structured reference is to add an extra set of brackets. Then after the amount reference, we'll put a colon and start another set of brackets. And then we'll go down and say amount. We'll close the second amount reference with brackets and then another set of brackets for the overall reference. This is how you define an absolute reference when using structured references in data tables. I'm going to hit enter. We still get the same answers we got before, but now when we repeat this formula across the rest of the commission rate table, we can see how every single reference to that amount column has stayed locked. The percentages for the commission rates have moved in a relative fashion moving from columns H to I to J to K to L, but the amount reference stayed the same for every single instance. So referring to the column twice, separated by a colon, and then surrounded by an extra set of brackets, will give you that absolute behavior. Now it's time for a bonus tip. Because we're taking advantage of the dynamic array engine in the new Excel, I don't actually have to write five separate formulas for the five different commission rates. So I'm gonna hit undo. I'm going to write one formula to build this entire table. Currently, we're using the dynamic array engine to take all of the amounts and multiply them by H6. But what if we took all of the amounts and instead of multiplying them by one cell, we multiplied them by all of the percentage cells? I'm going to press enter. And this entire table was built using one formula. Take all of the amounts and multiply them by all of the percentages. One formula to rule them all. Let us know in the comments what you think about absolute structured references. This video was produced in response to a request by one of the users in the comments. So if you have a request, put it in the comments and I'll make a video for you too. And remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.